Hey everybody, so finally giving the Rubicon some attention. Um, I just did the front grill and front bumper swap. Um, so this is a 2020 Rubicon 520. Everything before it, back to 2015, used this style bumper and grill. Uh, my 2020 came with this new style and I didn't like it very much off the bat uh, because it makes the bike about three inches longer. So um, you can't really see as much in the bumper, obviously that is thicker, but the way this piece of plastic is shaped, it sticks off way farther from the front of the bike. So they did this for cosmetics, make the bike look bigger and stuff like that. Um, they also did it to add this bar here, which is really thin and broke. Um, and the real problem is this will break your front window. Um, so the tires don't stick up far enough forward. So when you're in the bed of a truck, this sticks too far forward. Um, you can't really just swap the bumper. You gotta do this piece with it because of the way that this uh, 15 bumper fits in right here. So it fits in really compact. It's all slotted together. And that keeps the front of the bike flatter and shorter, uh, which means it won't break your back window. You'll have less overhang on a trailer. And if you ask me, it looks better. Um, so this bumper is like 150 bucks, I think, or this one, if you want to do the swap. And that was only like 10 bucks, that grill. Also, this has got this new vertical bar style grill. I like this honeycomb style grill better anyways. Um, so it's pretty much a direct swap. The only place you'll notice it's not a perfect fit is right here. You see how that doesn't line up quite perfect because um, this bumper has this piece of metal on it so it's wider, this sheet metal. Um, but if I didn't point that out to you, you probably would never notice because it looks pretty dang good. Um, as far as swapping it out, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can pull the rack, you can pull these plastics, everything like that. You don't need to do that. The easiest way to do it um, is to just pull off this bumper, take off two, uh, four screws on your skid plate so you can fold the skid plate down a little bit, take off these two screws, one, two, on your lights. That way when you pull this off, your lights will stay on the red piece. Way easier to do it. Um, take off this 10 and then do the same thing on the other side. If you do it this way, you don't have to mess with any wiring for your lights. So those same two bolts, one, two, and um, plastic clip here, plastic clip here, plastic clip here. You can actually get those out of the flat blade screwdriver without removing this. Or once you pull this bumper out of the way, you can just tilt this up a little bit. Um, so once you get all those out, it literally just pops out, put your new one in the opposite way, throw your bumper on. Um, if you have a snorkel where mine is, you may or may not have issues with getting to that top rack bolt because it's kind of behind the snorkel. I find you can get a little, little tiny uh, quarter inch in there and get it off pretty easy. Uh, you can see when I put that zip tie on there, I just crushed one of my vent lines. That would have been bad, so I got to redo that zip tie. Um, and while we're talking about snorkels... Um, a lot of people are like, hey, how do you mount your snorkels to your rack? So it's in a video, but I know you'll never find it because no one knows how to use the search button. I just use a zip tie or something flimsy. And the reason for that is if you get drunk and fly over the handlebars and you have one of those snorkels where you have an actual metal plate and this pipe is screwed on there, that PVC can shear off, make a sharp edge and kill you. Um, people who do metal snorkels do that kind of stuff. I'm sure it looks okay. Number one, it reverberates, sounds terrible. And number two, it's just stupid and dangerous. It's a great way to split your face open. Uh, I like my snorkel to be stout enough where it's not going to bounce all over the place, but flimsy enough where if I hit it with my face, it's not going to do grave damage. Um, and then oh, there's all my vent lines on this one. I decided not to run them in the air box. Um, they're all up here. I used to run them into this pod, but we've been going deeper lately. And this is about six inches higher than the top of the pod. And when you're on a water relay, it's even higher than that. So that's what I did on this one. This rack's a little different. So I just literally cut the rack and folded it up like that. Yeah. You can do a U-bolt, another U-bolt or anything you want there, but, um, my recommendation is make that safe and don't impale yourself on a snorkel. But hey, do whatever you want to do. Um, I get asked about the snorkel kits all the time. I think they're all garbage. All the snorkel kits reduce flow into the airbox that I've ever seen. Um, the flexible pipe ones, probably the worst. The ones that use one and a half pipe, that's one and a half inch pipe. That's not enough for a 500 or a 520 or really a 420. You want two inch pipe all the way in the airbox. So watch that video. Also, if you do the grill and bumper swap, you still keep your little storage box here, which has come in handy a few times. I wouldn't call it watertight, uh, but it has come in handy a few times. It could have been watertight, but the gasket's kind of split right here. So I wonder if you just put some glue right there, if you could fix that. But um, I wouldn't trust it regardless. But that little storage is handy, and I think this looks better um, than this, you know, wannabe aggressive Tron looking grill. This is so, so stupid to me. People also complain about the grills in these things and the bumpers. Like, oh, they're not that strong. It's like, dude, you've obviously never had a can of or players that just doesn't have a bumper. Um, yeah, they're not super strong, but if you wanted a really heavy, stupid bumper, um, your bike's going to be heavy. So Honda made it pretty strong without really adding any weight. It's incredibly light, all this stuff, and it really holds up pretty good unless you slam into someone really hard. 
Um, and having an actual metal bumper is nice. You got a nice tie point right here, put a soft shackle on, you can push people out a little bit. You just gotta be kind of gentle. Um, I don't know why people complain about these bumpers. It's like, what do you want? You want the bike to weigh 900 pounds like a Can-Am or, or you want it to be fairly light and have a decent amount of protection? I, I don't, you know, you're never gonna please everybody, Honda, but I think you did a great job with these bumpers. People complain about this bumper. Obviously never had the old um, air-cooled Foreman 500 bumpers that were completely pathetic. And I could just rip it off by just yanking on it. Um, at least this does have one solid bar going all the way across. So they don't fold that easily. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty good swap, pretty easy mod. Um, probably not worth doing if you don't put the four-wheeler in the bed of a truck frequently. Um, if you always tow in a trailer, you probably don't care. But I frequently like to just throw one bike in the back of the truck and I mess with the trailer. So this makes it way safer for my back window.